Many in the health sector would have been pleased to hear the announcement of the extra funding going to the NHS, only for the joy to be struck down by the realisation of a broken manifesto promise not to raise national insurance contributions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was only compounded further on the discovery that a raft of frontline care providers, care homes, hospices, care charities, pharmacies, GPs, to name but a few, found themselves not exempt from the NI rises, leaving them with crippling staff bills and the threat of closure and redundancies. The hospice sector expects the cost to be £30 million, closure and redundancies. For GPs, the initial assessment could be £260 million, closure, redundancies and the cost of 2.2 million appointments. And from the care sector, the changes alone will cost £2.4 billion, dwarfing the £600 million announced by social care support. So does she accept that council tax will inevitably have to rise to support the increase in NICs? And now, for the first time, the National Pharmacies Association has announced collective action. The chair of the National Pharmacies Union has said the sense of anger amongst pharmacy owners has been intensified exponentially by the budget, with its hike in national insurance employers' contribution and unfunded national living wage increase, which has tipped even more pharmacies to the brinks. So I asked the Minister to clarify, who is exempt from NI? Would they admit they got it wrong and make a change? The Prime Minister, Health Secretary and Chancellor have all said that allocations will be made in the usual way. So will the Minister clarify what is the usual way? Will mitigations be put in black and white to this House and the public so they can see? And is this part of the £20 billion or new funding? But more importantly, will the Minister lay out a concrete timetable for hospices, care homes, GPs, pharmacies and all other allied health professionals who are making decisions now because this seems another example of a big headline by the Labour Party but no detail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, really. Uh, I mean, I'm really quite dumbfounded by the response from the Honourable Member who I respect for his own professional practice and that he knows the state of the NHS when he was in opposition um, and what we inherited, as reported through Lord Darcy's report. He talks about joy. There was no joy when we inherited the mess that they left in, in back, back in July. He talked about people being tipped to the brink. They absolutely were, and that's what Lord Darcy has made absolutely clear. As I've said, we will go through the allocation of the additional funding in the normal process, which will be faster than it was under his government, because we are committed to giving the sector much more certainty. And the normal process, as he should really know, for his time in opposition, is to go through the mandate and the planning guidance and talk to the sector about the allocations that will be due for in next April, as I said in my opening statement. 